Let's do a quick introduction to physics 1137, which, uh, congratulations, you're on the fifth pace. You're making good progress. But um, I'm going to just kind of fly through a couple of key points, and then I'm going to do a video for one problem. Um, just before I start, I want to point out that I'm, I'm looking through the pace, and it looks like um, the problems where you have to solve Okay, so the math type problems, just about every single one of them is in the solution guide at the back of the score key. Okay, so instead of only giving one example that they solve out and then you have to try to figure the rest out on your own, it looks like almost every problem they have shown how they get it. Okay, so that should help if you get stuck. You can actually look at the steps and see uh, what you missed or have a supervisor or parent you know, help you guide, guide you through that. I want to talk real quick about, uh, about halfway through the pace, there is a concept about um, any, really any substance, but they're mainly focusing on water. And um, to, if you add a little bit of heat to water, as you know, you can raise the temperature and it gets a little bit warmer, a little bit warmer, okay, until it reaches like bath water temperature and then you keep adding more heat to it. And if you, you would eventually get to the point where the water would begin to boil, right? I, I don't know if you remember this from physical science or maybe from chemistry class, but um, as long as ice is ice, it does not change temperature, okay, as it's melting. It stays at exactly zero degrees the whole time it's melting until the entire block of ice has melted and become water. Once it's become water, then the temperature begins to rise as the heat is added. And then, once it reaches, you keep adding um, heat to it, and it reaches the boiling point. And when it reaches the boiling point, it stays at that temperature, which we know is 100 degrees, okay? And this is zero degrees in Celsius. <clears throat> Actually, ice can be colder. I don't know if you know that, but you could have the temperature of ice be colder than zero degrees, but once you add heat to it and it reaches zero, it won't go above it until the block of ice has completely melted. Then the water increases in temperature till it reaches 100, stays steady at 100 while it all turns to steam. Once it's all turned to steam, believe it or not, the temperature of the steam could be increased. All right. So there is a chart in your pace that's similar to this, and then it shows how much heat actually can be added. And heat is measured in something called calories, or if you have a thousand calories, that's kilocalories. <clears throat> I want to point out three numbers that are kind of hidden in the text that are very important. You're going to need these a lot in solving problems. These are called constants. And so for water, the it's called the... I'm trying to remember what L stands for. Vaporization, and this is fusion. Um, <clears throat> it takes five to, to go from liquid to gas. That's what vaporization is, liquid to gas. It takes 540 calories okay, per gram of water. To go from freezing to liquid, or to go from liquid to freezing, it would be 80 calories per gram. Okay. So obviously if you're increasing the temperature, you are going from freezing to melting, so that fusion is coming apart. But if you're going from liquid to solid, you're pulling the heat out of it and it's becoming an ice cube. And literally you can measure that. That's what's so cool about physics. Everything can be measured. And it is exact numbers. It does not change. Okay. So this is a constant, this is a constant, and then SH stands for the, or this is called the latent latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of fusion. Okay, I just had to remember what that L was. SH is the specific heat, and every substance has a different specific heat, but water, thankfully, is very simple. It's one. If you add one calorie of heat to one gram of water, it will raise the temperature one degree Celsius. Okay, so it's kind of a cool, ha <laughs> get it, cool. Uh, all right, we're warming up here. Let's uh, point out, take your pace, okay, the text part of your pace, and I want to point out three things real quick. So write these down. On page 26, 
I guess when they wrote this pace years ago, they did not have the capability of doing the square root symbol. And so they wrote it as 0 0.5 being the exponent. Now maybe you know that from Algebra 2 or Advanced Math, but it's quite possible that a bunch of you doing this do not know that a one-half exponent, which is the same as 0 0.5, means exactly the same thing as square root. So if I were you, wherever you see the 0 0.5, I would just take your pencil right now and just write the square root symbol over it, okay? Because on your calculator, it's going to be a lot easier to solve the problem using the square root key than trying to figure out a 0 0.5 exponent. All right, so that's a tip from Mr. Anger. Page 29, here's a tip. Put a box around this formula. This is the ideal gas law. Just memorize it. You probably memorized it back in physical science. I know in physical science we use this a lot. I know we use this in chemistry. So maybe that's not too hard. Okay, so hold on to this one and then you can cross multiply. So T1 P2 V2 equals P1 V1 T2. So I got that by just cross multiplying. Set them equal. And then whatever you're being asked to solve for, just divide by the other things on that side, okay? I think that's easier than... Anyways, just do that. And then on page 30, I want to point out, they, this formula in most other books is written in this way. PV equals NRT. N is the number of moles. Pressure, volume, temperature, that's easy. R is a constant, and they give you that number... Here on the very back page, R has a value 8.21 times 10 to the negative second, or you could just write 0 0.0821. Should, that's usually how I have my students do it, just 0, 0 0.0821. That number doesn't change, okay? <clears throat> the problem will give you three of the other four variables and ask you to solve for what is the fourth one. But it's easier if you start with it in this form and then have to solve for whatever is missing, okay? So do that right now. Just write this formula on page 30. Make these couple of notes. Um, when you get to these numbers in your pace, circle them so that you can, or highlight them so that when you start solving the problems, you know where those numbers are. And um, I'm going to do one more video, um, taking a one problem that I think could be rather challenging. And even though it is in the solution guide, I want to kind of walk you through the math involved in that challenge problem. And then maybe that will even help you do some of the other problems on that page. All right, so we'll come back and do that video. It's about halfway through the pace, but you can get started now. Um, there's some other problems. There's one like uh, anything when you heat it up will expand. So metal expands, concrete expands, you know, everything expands, which is why on roads and bridges they have these expansion joints, because if they don't, things would just crack. Um, but that can actually be measured, okay? So for that particular substance, the length changes based on the change in temperature. But it's a very simple formula, and again, there's constants that you plug in. I really don't think you'll find that to be hard, okay? So hopefully this pace um, you won't find it to be too, too challenging. And uh, then we'll see what the next pace is going to look like. But I think with maybe this video and one more, um, hopefully you'll see success. All right, good job.